thousand pounds. Jane, whatever happens, you go home with our love with thirty-two thousand pounds. Have a look. Go on. I, I tell you what, hold it. Go on, take it. Take it. I can't believe this. Take it. You've got it. Whatever happens, okay? Yeah. You've got thirty-two. We don't want to give you that, but no. you've got thirty-two thousand. We have given you that. Yeah. Okay, but you know the next one's worth sixty-four. Yeah. You can't lose. Yeah. You're going home. Is this sinking in yet? You're going no. home <laughs> with thirty-two thousand pounds. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Question number eleven. Which organisation closely linked to the Labour Party advocates gradual social reform within the law? Fabian Society, Chiltern Hundreds, 1922 Committee, Steering Committee. Take as long as you need. Mm. Which organisation closely linked to the Labour Party advocates gradual social reform within the law? I really don't know, so I'm just going to have to guess. Take your time, have a look at it. There's a couple that I think it might be, so I'm going to go for one of those. Which ones do you think it might be? Um, either A or C. <laughs> Fabians or 1922? Mm. Not Children Hundreds, not Steering Committee? <clears throat> no, I don't recognise either of those. No. I'm going to try, I'm going to play and I'm going to go for 1922 Committee. Sure, take your time. Yeah, because I really don't know. So. And you've got £32,000, whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> final answer? Yeah, it is final answer. I can tell you the two you eliminated, Chilton Hundreds and Steering Committee, were both wrong. You thought it was either Fabian Society or 1922 Committee. You went for 1922 committee of the two. If you'd said to me Fabian Society, you would have just won £64,000. Oh. oh, and I thought you were going to go for it as well. I am sorry. Listen, I think you've had a bit of a result there, don't you? Oh, I think so. £32,000. Brilliant. Yeah. Give her a big hand. Jane Ryder goes away. £32,000. Better off. But tonight, you want to be a millionaire. Now it's time to meet tonight's ten brand new contestants. They are Matt Bateman from Warwickshire, Roland Hughes from Norfolk, Jill Ellington from London, Gillage Lewis from Middlesex, Dennis Robertson Sullivan from Edinburgh, Paulette Newby from Hampshire, Graham Hitson from Middlesex, Judith Keppel from London. Caroline Hughes from Staffordshire and Darren Simons from Cambridgeshire. Right. Fastest finger first. Whoever puts the four answers in the correct order in the fastest time is next to the play for a possible £1 million. Pounds. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience. Quiet as little mice so they can concentrate. Right, fastest finger first. Here comes the question. Starting with the fewest number of letters in their names, Put these vegetables in order. So, four vegetables coming up. You want to start with the one with the least number of letters, going up to the one with the most. Here they come. Parsnip, cauliflower, artichoke, carrot. Most of them finish very quick. Well, let's see. It's not actually as easy to do at speed as you may think. Right, uh, starting with the fewest, then. The fewest number of letters. Uh, smallest one, obviously, carrot. Uh, then parsnip. Uh, then it's artichoke. Then, obviously, the longest one is cauliflower. Right, that's the right order. Let's see how many got it right out of ten. How many were right? Quite a few. Not all of them. Who was fastest? Darren Simons in 4.34 seconds. <laughs> So this is Darren Simons, an electrician from Cambridge. Up there in the audience is uh, partner Natalie, watching at home with Uncle Danny and Auntie Donna is Caitlin, who's just 19 months. Uh, Darren's a self-confessed chocoholic, and he claims that if he won a million pounds, he'd change his name by deed poll to Willy Wonka <laughs> and open up his own chocolate factory. Funnily enough, Natalie also has a similar addiction, so while Darren, or Willy Wonka, is at the factory, she'd invite Robbie Williams to share a chocolate bath with her. 
You're a strange couple, really, aren't you? Yeah, we're a bit of a weird couple. OK, well, you got a plan? You got a strategy? Just do as well as I can, really. That's a good one. Before I collapse. <laughs> well, you'll be <laughs> all right. You got any chocolate on you? <laughs> okay. 15 questions, £1 million, three brand new lifelines. Darren can use them whenever he wants because, as we always say on the show, they're only easy if you know the answer. He's got 50 50, he's got phone a friend, and he can ask this audience. Okay, lots of luck, Darren. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, Darren, have a look. Question number one, hopefully very straightforward. There are no trick questions at all on millionaire. Usually very straightforward, up to 1,000. Just be aware, if you did give me a wrong answer early, before question number five, you go home with nothing. That's why you got those three lifelines. Have a look. Question number one's worth 100 quid. What's the fourth closest planet to the sun in our solar system? Mars. Snickers. This is right up your street, Willy Wonka. Crunchy. Or dime. It's Mars, Chris. It's the right answer, Darren. You've got 100 pounds. <laughs> Couldn't have noticed him while I was reading those out. Your lips were sort of. That's it, yeah. <laughs> OK, have a look. Question number two, 200 quid. Here it is. Which of these words means courageous? Brainy, gutsy, leggy or skinny? It's gutsy. It's right answer. You've got 200 pounds. <laughs> OK, take your time. Let's get you up to 1,000 pounds. At least have a look at number three. It's worth 300 quid. Here it is. On which type of transport would a poop deck commonly be found? A poop deck. Helicopter. Ship, car, bicycle. I'm not 100% sure, so I'll ask the audience. OK, uh, audience on your keypads, please. Let's make sure we get Darren up to 300 quid. Uh, on which type of transport would a poop deck commonly be found? A, B, C or D, all vote now. Uh, 88% are saying ship. 4% uh, think you find a poop deck on a helicopter. 1% think you find a poop deck on a car. 7% <laughs> think you find a poop deck on a bicycle. <laughs> Darren, it's entirely your choice, but 88% looks pretty promising to me. Yeah, I'll go with the audience, I'll say shit. Well, I shouldn't go with all of them. I should go with the 88%. <laughs> it's the right answer, you've got 300 quid. <laughs> One percent of this audience thinks a poop deck is found on a car. It's a worry, isn't it? Right, have a look at question number four. It's worth five hundred pounds. Here it comes. Limes became part of the Royal Navy's diet in an effort to prevent which condition? Limes. Malaria, scurvy, tonsillitis, sunburn. Scurvy, Chris. Sure. Yeah. How do you know? Well, I haven't suffered from it, so. I... I don't know, I just know. It's good. It's the right answer. You've got £500. <laughs> right, you've got 500 quid. Have a look at question number five. This is the last point, Darren. You could go home with nothing. I'm sure you won't. Have a look at question number five. It's worth £1,000 here, which is a fair few days uh, doing wiring as an electrician. Have a look. Question number five. Here it is. Something typically American in character is said to be as American as what? Apple pie. Blueberry muffin, cotton candy, demerara sugar. Cotton candy, I'm thinking. You've got a couple of lifelines if you need them. We've got 50 50. You can. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Please leave down the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Ah. Cotton candy doesn't look too promising now. That's apple pie, Chris. Sure? Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. You got a thousand pounds. Well done, mate. That's what I'd like to support us, why don't they? Yeah, lucky cotton candy went, really. Right, you got a thousand pounds. You've still got that phone, a friend. Darren, good news, you're guaranteed going home with a thousand pounds. That's um that's all right, isn't it? That's lovely. A few bars of chocolate. That's it. Right. Question number six is worth two thousand pounds. Here it is. You're guaranteed a thousand now, Darren. Here we go. Shane Lynch. Mikey Graham 
and Keith Duffy are members of which band? Manic Street Preachers, Another Level, Oasis, Boyzone. It's worth 2,000. It's Boyzone, Chris. Sure? Yeah. Play the records? No. Like them? Not really, no. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. It's good. You just won £2,000. <laughs> so how are you feeling now, then? A bit better. A bit better? Yeah, a lot bit better, better now. There's money in the bank. Yeah, £2,000. Uh, don't lose it, basically. You're guaranteed a 1000 you know that. Take your time, have a look at question number seven of a possible 15. What was Zebedee's catchphrase in the magic roundabout? And so to bed. Sweet dreams. Good night, children everywhere. Time for bed. What was Zebedee's catchphrase in the magic roundabout? And so to bed. Sweet dreams. Good night, children everywhere. Or time for bed. Did you ever see it? Yeah, but I can't remember what he said. I thought it was boing. <laughs> You've got to find a friend, but it's um, it's a bit of a strange thing to ask one of your mates, really. It is, isn't it? Uh, I think I'll have to find a friend, so okay. I haven't got a clue, Chris. Okay. Take your time, who'd be good? Um... <clears throat> Which one of your friends do you think is most likely to have watched Magic Roundabout? <laughs> I think I'll phone Emma. Emma? Yeah. Okay, where's she? Up in Cambridge? Yeah, she's in Cambridge. Okay, we'll phone Emma. 30 seconds, tell her the question, four possible answers. You can still walk away with £2,000, Darren. It's worth four. Hello? Emma? Hello. Hello, it's Chris Darren here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Good evening. Oh, hello. Oh, um, I've got Darren Simons here. Right. Uh, he's on £2,000 at the moment. Excellent. Uh, excellent, but with your help, we can make it double excellent. We can get him up to £4,000. OK. Uh, Emma, the next voice you hear will be Darren's. He'll tell you a question. There are four possible answers. One of them's worth £4,000. All right, Emma. OK. OK, lots of luck. Darren, your time starts now. Hi, Emma. Hiya. What was Zebedee's catchphrase in the Magic Roundabout? Was it, and so to bed? Was it sweet dreams? Was it good night children everywhere? Or was it time for bed? It's a guess, Darren, but I think it's the last one. Time for bed? Time for bed, yeah, it's a guess. How sure are you, Emma? Um, about 45, 50%. OK. Best of luck. It's up to you. Uh, you got 2,000. It's obviously uh, a handy sum of money. You can walk away with that. Um, if she's wrong, you lose 1,000. If she's right, it's worth four. Take your time, Darren. No, I'll go time for bed. Lose 1,000 if you're wrong. It's up to you. No, I'll go for it. Time for bed. Final answer. Final answer. So how long have you known Emma, then? She's my best mate's wife, so about five, six years. It's good. She just won you £4,000. <laughs> hey, Darren. Four grand. And if you'd said cotton candy. <laughs> That's why lifelines are there. You've got £4,000. Have a look at the next one. You've got no lifelines, but it's worth £8,000. Take your time. This is question number eight. Who wrote the autobiography, Managing My Life? Rude Hullet. Alex Ferguson. Terry Venables. Kevin Keegan. I think it's Alex Ferguson, but I'm not 100% sure. So... Like I say, four grand will come in handy, so... I think I'll just take the money, Chris. Take, take your time. Have a last look. Who wrote the autobiography, Managing My Life? Ruth Hullett, Alex Ferguson, Terry Venables, or Kevin Keegan? It's worth £8,000. You don't have to play this question. You've got <clears> 4000 in your hand at the moment. I don't think any of the others have wrote the autobiography, so... 